Micro hydropower is ideal for providing clean, reliable electricity in mountainous off-grid locations. An organization in Indonesia has used it to bring electricity to tens of thousands of people for the first time. And it's now made it possible for grid-connected communities to benefit from Hydro 2 by selling electricity to the grid. It's the annual rice harvest in the remote Indonesian mountain kingdom of Kasepuhan. Working together for the common good is part of daily life here. We have what we call Nahiras, which is a tradition of working together without payment, working together to be united to honour our parents. This tradition of collective effort is being applied to electricity generation. The tiny kingdom now has hydropower plants owned and run by the community. They were installed by non-profit organisation Ibeka. One in three Indonesians has no access to mains electricity and with 55 plants in operation, Ibeka sees community-owned micro-hydro schemes as being the answer for many living off the grid. Sustainable micro-hydro is where the community has the capability to operate, to run and maintain by themselves. And we give the training to make sure that this community-based electrical power supply is run by the local community. The schemes bring jobs, with local people trained and employed for construction, operation and routine maintenance. Mobile phone charging, safe, clean light and television are just some of the benefits. The main benefit of the turbine for us, compared to before we had access to electricity, is that now we have light to guide us home after working in the field. Before, the road was confusing because it was so dark. Now, it is not like that anymore, because we are guided home by the lights, and when we get home, we have lights in our houses. That is the main benefit. We watch TV to relax and be entertained. We get updates on fuel prices and daily necessities. Ibeka is now extending its community-owned microhydro model to villages already connected to the national grid, like this one, Sintameka. In fact, four of its 55 plants are grid-connected. There's a lack of generating capacity in Indonesia, and Ibeka saw this as an opportunity for communities with hydro resources to feed sustainable electricity back to the grid and get paid for it. But it took all of Tri Mumpuni's determination to convince the government to allow it. I told them, as long as you do not agree, I will always come and knock your door and showing my face and begging you, please issue this policy. Finally, in 1999, that's the first very small 13 kilowatt uh, micro hydro owned by the local farmer, were able to go to the grid. The policy established power purchase agreements by which small electricity producers can sell electricity to the grid. With this profit incentive in place, Ibeka has been able to attract private investment. The Sintameka scheme earns around 5,000 US dollars a month. This pays for local people to maintain and operate the system, as well as yielding a return for the private investor. 20% is dispersed by a community cooperative, with education and healthcare as key priorities. The cooperative uses the income to subsidize school fees and for loans to expand local businesses. Anyone asking for a $100 loan will have their proposal reviewed before a decision is made on how much the cooperative should give. Since 1992, Ibeka has brought light and power to an estimated 54,000 people. Its grid-connected plants are now generating income too. We're just starting to have 2.8 megawatt. If we sell this electricity, the rural area can have huge money to build school, to build hospital in a very remote area because they have an income. Its focus now is to bring sustainable electricity to Indonesian communities, both on and off the grid.